We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Oh, matchless King, you are faithful to us. And we are gracious to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, Cutting Edge Global, and welcome to another Sunday worship. Is anybody excited to be in the house on this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greet your neighbor, greet a friend, and tell them it is good to see you today. Hallelujah. We are excited for what the Lord is going to continue to do as we are in the series of the call. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. We honor you and we glorify you, we magnify you and we lift you high. For you are a great God and you are our great King and there is none beside you, there is none greater than you. For God, when we look back over our lives and seen how you have brought us, only thing we can do is say thank you. And so with the fruit of our lips, we will say thank you, Jesus. We will say thank you, Father. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that as we enter into these gates with thanksgiving and into these courts with praise, we will be thankful unto you and we will bless your name. We love you father because you have been so good you've been so kind you've been so merciful thank you for mercy pleading our case over and over and over again i thank you father that even in this moment there are some god who don't have the activity of their of their limbs god but because i have the activity of my hands i will lift them to you in worship i will lift them to you in praise i will lift them to you in thanksgiving i will lift them to bless your name high i bless you god for being the healer that you are so healer we call you to come Come in now, Jehovah Rapha, we need you to rest upon us. God, we need you, oh God. As we are entering into this time of worship, we pray now that you would counsel with your counsel and that you would release your angels, God, and send ministering angels where we need ministry. Send the warring angels, oh God, to loose, oh God, things that have been bound. So God, we call now things that are in heaven as though they are in earth. So God, where our healing has already been declared in heaven, we declare it here on earth. Where our finances have already been broken free in heaven, we declare them broken free in earth. Where provision has been made in heaven, we declare it to be made here in the earth. Where the doctor said, you the great physician has already called us heal, we declare our healing right now here in the earth. We thank you, Abba, for your great and wonderful works we declare now in the name of Jesus that we will surrender this atmosphere Holy Spirit you have your way in this place Holy Spirit we yield our will to yours Holy Spirit we pray now in the name of Jesus that a portal from heaven that you will open God and begin to pour the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. God, we declare that there will be an exchange today. There is an exchange today, the Lord of Zion. As we answer the final call, as we answer your final call, God, we will say yes. We will give you a yes. And we will forever move in your glory. In the name of Jesus, God, we surrender this, this atmosphere. We surrender this service to your glory. And we surrender it to your will now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Come on, people of God, let's give God some glory. Come on, let's give God some glory in your own way. Come on, you're welcome in the room, Jesus. You're welcome in the room. Have your way, have your way. Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way. Can we just throw our hands up right there? Come on in the room, come on in the room, come on in the room. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Real quick, catch it, come on. We lift you up. Hey! Woo! We lift you up. Shana na 
na na man, you surrender na na man, you say, hey, we lift you up. Yeah. Hey. We lift you up. Now you try to catch it. Turn that track down into my ear. Come on, say, we lift you, we lift you up. Real simple, come on, say. Do what good, Lord, and we lift you up. We just gonna prophesy real quick, come on, say. Hey, we lift you up. I need y'all to sing it wherever you are. Come on, say we lift you up. 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 Said we lift you up. 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 Said we lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. We praise your name. We praise your name. Hey. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? Come on, say it. Say we praise your name. We praise your name. Come on, how will you praise him? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his praise. Come on, say. It. Say we praise your name. We praise your name. Say we praise your name. We praise your name. Say we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Say we praise your name. We praise your name. Say we bless your name. We bless your name. Say we bless your name. We bless your name. Say we bless your name. We bless your name. Say we bless your name. We bless your name. Say we praise your name. We praise your name. Say we praise your name. Say we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Said we lift you up. We lift you up. Said we lift you up. You ready? Said we lift you up. We lift you up. One, two, three. Now do what you just said and lift up the name of Jesus. For only He's worthy, 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 worthy. We praise your name. We praise your name. Come on, 30 more seconds of that. We praise your name. Shanananamandiyose. On Sunday morning, we praise your name. Somebody came in the house with expectation on their heart. And I need the people of God to open up your mouth and do what you just said. Put a praise in the atmosphere. We praise your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Come on, can we go high in worship? Thank you, Jesus. Come on and clap your hands together. It's a good day to give God praise in this house. <laughs> hey, we bless your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey. Bless the Lord, ye heavenly host, hallelujah, bless the Lord, all you his angels, hey, and let all the earth, hey, hallelujah, oh, come on, come on and bless the Lord, where were you at, come on, come on, come on, and bless the Lord, Come on and bless the Lord. Come on, come on and praise His name. Hallelujah. Come on, come on and bless the Lord. Come on, come on and praise His name. Hallelujah. We give you praise. You've been so good. You've been so good. Yeah. Come on, come on and praise His name. Come on and praise His Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come 
on and bless the Lord, bless the Lord, yeah, come on, yeah. Come on and bless the Lord, hey. come on and praise His name. Come on, come on. And Get right there, come on and bless the Lord. Come on, come on and bless yes. Come on and praise His name. Hallelujah. Come on, come on and bless Him. He's been so great, He's been so good. Come on, come on and bless That's why come we bless Him. That's why come we on, bless Him. Come, come on and bless the Lord. Come on, come on and bless Come on and bless him now. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Yeah. I will bless the Lord. Come on, come on and bless him. I will bless him. Come on and praise him. I will praise him. Cause you're worthy, worthy. Yeah. Come on, come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Come on, come on and bless him. Hallelujah. For the Lord delights in. Show mercy. Hey, for the Lord did lie. Hallelujah. Show mercy. Hey, for the Lord did lie. For the Lord did lie. He delights in it. He delights in it. Show mercy. Show mercy. For the Lord did lie. For the Lord did lie. All right, now here we go. Show mercy. When I move my body, yeah. when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, yes. when hey. I move my feet, when I open Come my mouth, come on, open up your mouth and give a praise. When I move, when I move, hallelujah. When I move, yeah. When I move my feet, it's time to give God the glory. The darkness is behind us, so we open up our mouth to give Him praise. When I move, 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 Is a weapon. My praise 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 is a weapon. My dance is a weapon. My dance is a weapon. My shout 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 is a weapon. Your shout is a weapon. Come on and come on and come on and bless him. We give him glory. Into into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Yes. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Go on and clap your hands. It's time to give God glory. We come to give God the glory, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and praise Him. Clap your hands and give God some glory. Hey, open up your mouth and let the darkness behind you. I come to give Him glory. I come to give God glory, yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, Woo. Let's go. I really do feel like dancing. I really do feel like dancing. I really do feel like dancing. Say, I really do feel like dancing. I need y'all to catch a couple. Say, I really do feel like dancing. I really do feel like dancing. What's that? Say, come on.
on, say, I really do feel like I really do feel like dancing. We have a touch, come on. I really do feel like I really do feel like dancing. That's good, come on, say, I really do feel like I really do feel like dancing. Quick, 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 quick. One, two, three, let me see it. Come on. Hey. Yeah. Something happened in the atmosphere on last week. Somebody pulled out a tambourine. Somebody began to stomp a little hard. Somebody started double clapping. And then the praises begin to spread like a wildfire in the room. And God said, I want that same atmosphere on today. So I begin to read a story about King David. And the Bible says that when he got the Ark of the Covenant back, when he got his promise back and he believed it, the Bible says that he began to dance when they entered Jerusalem. And this was no any kind of dance, but the Bible says that he danced so hard that his garments, his praise garments began to fall off. And so I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe that when you dance this time, that victory is under your feet. And all you got to do is pick them up, put them down, pick them up, put them down. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds. So says, I really do feel like dancing. I really do feel like dancing. Come on. I really do feel like dancing. Y'all ready? Here we go. I really do feel like dancing. Come on, say. I really do feel like dancing. I really do feel like dancing. I really do feel like dancing. Come on, say. I really do feel like dancing. Come on, say. I really do feel like dancing. You come on, say, say, I gotta dance. I, I gotta dance. I gotta dance, and I gotta let it out. I gotta dance. 
Come on, put that rock on it. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's Hallelujah, in the room. Hallelujah, Jesus. Said, I got to praise. I, I got to praise. I got to praise. And I got to let it out. I got to praise. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. Woo. Come on. Sing, I got to praise. I, I got to praise. I got to praise. And I got to let it out. I got to praise. This is your moment. This is your moment. It shouldn't even be silent right here. We won't let the rocks cry out. Come on. Sing, I got to praise. I, I if he did it for the lilies in the field. I got to praise and I got to let it How out. much more? I got to praise. Yeah. Come on, say it. Sing, I, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to let it out. I got Right there, right there, right there, right there. Woo! Come on. Come on, come on, come on. On your own, on your own, no music. See, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to let it out. I got to praise. Thank you, Jesus. Give me some more of that organ right there. Come on, we got time, we got time in your own way. In your own way. In your own way. The angel of the Lord commanded Joshua that when they walked around the walls of Jericho, that as they marched for six days, they were supposed to be quiet. But I hear the Lord saying, This is the seventh day. And there's a shout that must come from your belly. The church, we've been quiet for a long time. But there's a shout that comes from your belly. So come on, people of God, let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Come on, let it rise. Let it, there it is. Come on. Let it rise. Let it rise. There it is. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Come on, sing. Let it rise. Do me a favor. Some of us don't even know what to do with this glory. But go ahead and wave your hands in this. No music, just the organ. Come on, say, let it rise. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let it rise. Let the minstrels minister. Come on. Come on.
come on, we don't we don't have to wait till the end of service. Let it rise, let it rise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let it rise, let it rise. Let it rise, let it rise. Let it rise, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the praise of thy king. Let it rise, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Praise is our liking. We want you. We need you. We want you. We need you. Yes, we want you. We need you. We want you. We need you. Say, we want you. We need you. We want you. We need you. We want you. We need you. We want you. Come on, worshipers, by yourself. Come on, say, we want you. We want you. We need 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 you. There's such an atmosphere of worship. There's such an atmosphere of the prophetic word of the Lord. I just wanted to openly release those that are prophets in the house. Those of you that have a word for somebody else in the house, we're going to release you right now while we worship for about another three to five minutes. We've already seen one. The Lord has already been showing his glory. He's already been showing who he is. And so if you know it and you see it, and there's someone specifically that God has given you to say something to, we release you now as we worship. Say, we want you. We want we you. you. We need you. We want 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 you. We need you. We want you. We want you. We want you. So let it rise. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you need from the Lord, just tell him what you need. We want more of you, Lord. Honor your sire. We need more of you, Lord. We need more of you, Lord. We want more of you, Lord. We extract in the glory. We extract in the glory. We extract in the glory. We pull from the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Even in this place, in this atmosphere, when there was a need, even think to uh, the widow who needed something. She needed provision for her and her son. And before she got provision, she had to give unto the prophet. And it wasn't what she was giving. It was just her obedience and what the Lord instructed for her to give. It just happened that it was her last, but it was the fact that she gave. So in this atmosphere, I promise you, if you just give unto the Lord what he's requiring of you, what he's asking of you. He will give you back everything that you need and more. I'm a witness that if you give, it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Does anybody want a running over blessing? Hallelujah. Does anybody need it? We just said, we want you. We need you. So in this atmosphere, let's give unto the Lord your tithe and your offering. Whatever the Lord has instructed you to do, whatever he's laid on your heart to do, ways to give are on the screen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's blessed to give. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be able to give. And we thank him. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Father. Hallelujah. 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 As we're giving, for those who have given already, we just want to pray a blessing over it. Father, we thank you. You are the giver of every good and perfect thing. You are the one who provides for us, not just in money, but God, you provide shelter, you provide food, you provide peace in the midst of storms. So we thank you for this opportunity to give unto you. Thank you, Lord, that you have created us to be good stewards and managers over what you have given unto us. So, Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that every seed that has been sown here in the house and what has been given electronically, God, that you would bless it, that you would multiply it. As we declare, we know that Cutting Edge Global is good ground. This is fertile soil. So as the, the soil has been tilled already, it has been made ready by the worship and the atmosphere. We thank you, Lord, that you shall take these seeds and we will use them for the building of your kingdom. Bless the givers, bless the seeds now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for your giving. While you were playing that, and I know you're not playing this, but I heard... And because God is the greatest power, we shall never 
never be defeated. Come on, let's sing that. And because. We sing that again, and because, and because God is the greatest power, come on, we shall, we shall never, never be, never be defeated, and because God is the greatest power, come on, God. We shall never, come on, never be defeated. Come on, sing it again till you get it. And because God is the greatest power, Woo, my God, we shall never, never be defeated. Come on, and because God, and because God. Is the greatest power. We shall never, never be, never be defeated. Come on, one more time. And because God, and because God is the greatest power. We shall never, never be defeated. Come on, and because God. It's the greatest power. It's the greatest power. Oh, shut up. We shall never. We shall never. Oh, shut up. Come on. Never be defeated. Come on, one more time. And because God. And because God. Oh. It's the greatest power. Shut up. We shall never. Never be defeated. Come on, one more time. And because God. And because because God. Because either he's God or he's not he's God. We shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come on, one more time. Oh, because God. Defeated. Never be defeated. Yeah, come on. And because God. And because God. Woo. Hosanna. Is the greatest power. We shall never. Never be defeated. Everybody come in. And because God. Is the greatest power. We shall never. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come on, somebody got to say and it. Because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. Now tell the devil, come on and tell him, say, listen, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Come on, God be exalted. God is exalted. But never be defeated. I'll never be defeated. I'll never be defeated. I'll never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And God is exalted. God is exalted. I'll never be defeated. I'll never be defeated. We'll never be defeated. I'll never be defeated. Come on. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And God is exalted. God is exalted. We'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. We'll never be defeated. Huh? Never oh, say, be defeated. Yeah. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And God is exalted. God is exalted. We'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. We'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. 
Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come on. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. This is when you praise him in advance. For the trials and the tribulations that are coming. Persecutions that are coming. Dangers seen and unseen that are coming. I overcome. Yes, I will. I overcome. I overcome. Come on, you say it. If you've given God your complete surrender, just stand up with us as a sign of complete surrender. It won't be long, I promise. I just want God to know that this house is a house that he can come and abide in, dwell in, sit in. We want your word above all else. We came out for you. We came out for an encounter and an exchange. We came out because we don't want to experiment. We want your expertise, wisdom, and knowledge in this. Father, we come to you. Open. Somebody say, I'm open, Holy Ghost, to your will, to your wisdom, to your way. Father, I'm human. Hide me behind the cross. Let your word penetrate, meditate. Meet every need in this house. Do what only you can do, God. Be God. Some of us need God. We don't need another man. 
We need God. And we wait on you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Can we clap so the angels know the position? Let's clap so the angels know our location. So they know where to send all the blessings. Hey! Hey! So they know where to send all the help. Because my help come from the Lord. I need something from God. feel such a yes in this house feel such a yes in this house you can take your seats if you can if not y'all know how we do it just find your corner piece of the floor wall I promise you if I can't get through this message God will the Holy Ghost will preach the rest of it. We are ending our series called The Call. This is the last installation of the message, The Call. And we've gone through so many, um, I want to call them revisions, but they're not. So many encounters of the call, understanding the call of God on our life as the bride of Christ. When we started the year, we started with the message, The Bride of Christ. And there were multiple brides. I found myself to be the runaway bride. That was the kind of bride I was. The one that ran. Some of you all had different brides. Anybody remember which bride you were? Or which, which one? Call it out. The tormented bride. Oh, anybody else remember which bride you were? Jesus. Some of them we don't even want to revisit. So I'm still walking it through. <laughs> Help. Help, Holy Ghost. And I ain't going to tell on nobody. But somebody told me I, I uh, preached on Wednesday night online. And, and apparently I didn't tan some legs. I didn't know it. I was just speaking what was in the word of the Lord. But we know we're all called. It takes a lot to not only hear the call, but heed the call. Of God and so last week we had the installation of the close call and I told you all about my close call and I thought that my close call was just the example of me finding out after multiple tests and months of all kinds of things um, that the doctors have seen lesions and um, it's seen things in my body, and thank God that they were non-cancerous, and um, we gave God the glory. So, you know, the last time I had cancer, um, years ago, over a decade now, I had stage four ovarian cancer, and I was given the timeline. I had three months to live, and yet I'm still here. They typically say that when cancer comes again, 
it's coming with a vengeance. You typically, when it comes back like that, you don't make it out of it. And yet God is still God. Some people may say he God him right about now. God is just God him right now. My saying is either he's God or he's not God. And so we have to give it to him. And so even when we're close to not answering the call, the Lord gives us, and I apologize for not having the notes up. Don't worry, you'll see them on Wednesday. In the close call, after the close call, typically we get what I'm going to preach about today, the final call. I shared that with y'all last week that I was going to take you into this final call. And I began to deliberate over this message for quite some time and the Lord began to just open up um, and this morning in prayer with Arrow Network, my God it was on Nicole unbelievable the revelation that God gave and I'm going to share quite a bit of it today as we go into, or as we exit, I should say, out of the call, we're going to get ready for another uh, series. And um, because I was a teacher over 20 years, all of my series connect. That's the way we wrote curriculums and the way that we taught our class in our classrooms. And so you will see a lot of the overlapping because I am, I am, as a teacher, preacher, pastor, I'm more interested in you being able to connect these dots and understand them for your own life's sake, for um, practical living. Thank you, Bishop, for practical living. I want to thank God for all of you that are here, that are um, here for the first time, or you're here because you're a guest of others. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We, we're excited for you being here. Of course, we're not live, but we will be live. So they're watching the replay. Um, we have um, those that are in other states. And I know y'all coming on Thursday. We have what we call surge once a month. And this surge is going to be very, very important, very different, um, because this is um, going to be the service where I anoint the prophets. The Lord gave me an assignment a couple of months ago and uh, truly elevated or escalated, I should say, the assignment when I got a push from Nicole, uh, who is an amazing prophetic um, instrumentalist, psalmist, and I mean, when she pulls out the viola, it's, it's like, you know. And the Lord gave me a vision, and he told me, he said, for what we are called to do as a church, cutting edge, what we are called to do is in the body of Christ, um, specifically to this region, Illinois, the Midwest region, um, the metropolitan, and then the connecting um, states, tri-state area. The Lord has given this region an extreme apostolic um, seat. And as the body in the United States, as, as the body is preparing for transitions and preparing for tribulation, preparing more specifically for um, uh, when, when, a, when a woman wails, uh, for the, the contractions and, and the travail that she goes through. God showed me that there was a wind that needed to be released. And he said, I want you to anoint the prophet. Um, the kingdom prophet, and he spoke specifically to the kingdom prophet, which may be a little different from the administrations that we have seen operating, not that they're um, not necessary, but this is a, a, a more um, 
global call, if you will. For those of you that don't know a lot of um, my administration, I absolutely love being a local pastor, but we have a global mandate. And um, I believe that he placed me as a local pastor with a global mandate because he wants to make sure that, you know, sometimes you can get a, a big picture, a global picture, if you will, and then never take the time to do anything about it. You know, you never actually put yourself in position to assist um, or to cause anything to actually come into alignment. Um, you know, we like to rally on the outside and say, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I, I had that dream, you know, years ago. Anybody else? I did. I had that. Years ago, I had that dream. I had the awesome privilege to going into Kentucky a few months ago and prophesied concerning um, the Lord showed me the limestone in the caves. And uh, because I am... Um, a retransplant from Missouri. My mom is uh, from Missouri to show me state. And um, we, of course, the whole family moved here. And then later on, I moved back to Missouri. Uh, in the place where I lived, there were a lot of caves. One of the things that we noticed in Missouri, in those caves, the limestone caves, is that Limestone is extremely important for purification processes. Kentucky is another state that has the same, anon same amount of uh, limestone caves and aqueducts. And if you're looking uh, into the news, global news right now, you understand that there's, there's some pollution going on, air pollution going on. Now, when you have air pollution going on, one of the things that's going to be extremely important is that that area has what is called aqueducts or places, caves, where you can dig deep to get fresh water. Um, and so I began to prophesy to Kentucky because as we released and, uh, and I went for an apostolic prophetic um, function, apostolic prophetic function, my apostolic prophetic function to call and cause the water to rise. The water had been low. Um, and the Lord says specifically to me that he was going to revisit and he was going to cause revival. So there's a piece of the prophetic word um, I put, uh, somebody sent back to me from Kentucky and I put back on my page. And I'm saying that because I want people to truly, especially here, understand I don't have an agenda, <laughs> except for his. I really don't. I don't have an agenda. I'm not here because I'm trying to build a 5,000 seat auditorium. I'm not here because Bellwood is better than any other you know, suburb or city on the west. Or so I'm, I'm here because God called me, he, I, the call. I got a call, and I'm just answering the call. Um, and so wherever he places me, then that's just where I find myself. And so um, I was really set ablaze when I saw the other part of the body of Christ begin to work. And we saw revival hit in Kentucky. And then, of course, spread abroad. And, and of course, starting on a college campus, which, of course, most of you know is very dear to me because this moment in time that you're sitting in started because a re of a revival on the college campus of St. Xavier University. And so the movement that we're experiencing in the body of Christ when we collectively look at it from regional perspectives, from God's perspective, we can begin to see everybody moving in place everybody focusing on what God called them to focus on. And I believe we're in a place called the final call. We're in a place called the final call because the Lord has a kingdom agenda set. And we had been operating because we had, uh, for the last 50 years, we had been perfecting 
the church. I learned this from Pastor Kemp, Apostle Kemp, Tony Kemp at this time. He taught me years and years ago. He said, when you see the introduction of a new dispensation, the first thing you're going to see is the reintroduction of and the uh, establishment of each office. And so if you look over history, you see that, and it takes 20 years to reintroduce and reestablish each office. So we saw from the likes of uh, John G. Lake, and um, in, the, in the, well, we can actually, I'm sorry, start with the 1900s, right? You start in the 1900s and you see uh, the revival that took place 1903 in um, California, the Azusa Street, William Seymour. And you see um, there was at that point um, that revival literally set up doctrine. And there was a split of the, of the different doctrines, the, the Kojic Church of God, the Assemblies of God, all of that came from that one revival that spanned three years. And of course, yes, there was a lot of delineation that happened in that. We know the, the good, the bad, and the ugly that, pers that was persisting even during that uh, revival, but we know that God came clear into that place. And so it was the release of the church after the release of the church, and that lasted for 20 years, right? The revivals, and so there was then a revival that hit in Michigan, and there were universities that began to teach this revival. So you had Missouri from Michigan all the way to Missouri, um, and it's funny, I'm not gonna do this now, but when we did our 12 hour shut in prayer, I showed these lines. It literally, the revivals followed the water lines. And then if you look at the interstates, all of the interstates go across this way. They begin to follow the interstate lines. So I'm not gonna go into all of the history, but check us later in Realm University and you'll get that later. But if you can see after the church was then called back into in the 1900s, and we began to operate in unity in some fashion, you know, some fashion, um, we saw maybe not unity, but organization. And so organization started to happen. And in the organization, we began to see the development of the fivefold ministry. So the first one that came forth was the evangelist. So we saw John G. Lake, Willie Parham, um, uh, just a whole bunch of them that started in, yeah, in the 20s. Um, my girl, Amy uh, McPherson, in the 1920s and 30s. And what happened was those voices, Catherine Kuhlman, well, not yet, but yes, but they started to develop and establish, and it took them 20 years. So the evangelists established, it took 20 years. So from the 1900s, or, I'm sorry, the 1920s to the 1940s, you saw the evangelists established. Then from the 1940s to the 1960s, word of faith came in, and then you start to see from the evangelist or the missionary, you started to see um, 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 uh, healing, deliverance, and you started to see teaching. So the teaching ministry started to... to, to, to um, to come about so we went from the evangelist to the teacher we went from the teacher then to established pastors from the 1960s to the 1980s we began to see these megaplexes or these mega churches then that's when you saw amy mcpherson you saw Catherine kuhlman doing these large um uh, uh services and I'm, I'm just thinking of a name uh, what's his name that was here in chicago from from texas um, Lord Jesus, white. R.W. Shambach. Did somebody say it? R.W. Shambach. R.W. Because y'all, I didn't even hear you, but I think you said it in the air, and then my spirit just heard it. 
But R.W. Shamp, like, and so then you saw these massive revivals that then, from the masses' revivals, these were evangelists. They started to establish, because even in the word of God, evangelists established pastors. And so, let me say it again, evangelists established pastors. One more time, let me say that. Evangelists were the ones that established pastors, the office of the pastor. So the pastor then uh, became a very big thing. And then we saw, then we saw what was interesting. Then we saw from pastor, we saw prophet. And so then the prophets from the 19... Um, 80s to the uh, to to the early 2000s, you start you hear a lot of pr prophet this prophet that prophet this prophet that. From the early 2000s to now 2020, you hear apostles, apostle, apostle, apostle. So again, it took 20 years to establish every office. So then, where are we now? If they're all established now and in the house, what is their job? So synergistically, now that every office is established, we have a job to build the kingdom. So we're, uh, we are in the dispensation. I got to Y'all got to know this. We are in the dispensation of the kingdom. Now, there are some faulty foundations. We know that. We saw it as early as the 1900s. We saw the things that happened. We saw the racism that happened, the scandals that happened with Amy McPherson, Catherine Coleman. We saw all the scandals that happened. We heard of all of the stuff. So none of them came in as a pure move of God. So every officer, every officer, of the fivefold, do not be offended, body of Christ. Do not be offended that there was something that happened that caused you to see that they were still flesh. Okay. Come on, Bishop, preach with me. Give her somebody, give her a mic. As were the disciples turned apostles in Scripture. Because we still, as a body of believers, we still have a job to do. We are still all called. And I'm serious. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> it happens. Listen. Y'all, you listen. Because this is what I know. One person is, one person is, you, the weight of that would crush you if you thought that you were going to be the one that introduced the kingdom by yourself. Your region, your denomination, your, you are not enough. Okay, we all preaching together. Camera people, bishop, I mean everybody. Pastor Mike, this is, because this is kingdom. Oh, I think we're going to understand this message today. I, th I think we're going to get this today. And so the Lord be just... Was, was showing he said now he said this is the final call I called and, and, and it's crazy because we thought that or we know that per scripture that the the apostle is the one that lays the foundation so why was not the apostle established first And then it said the apostle and the prophet were there to establish. Because can I tell you that the fivefold is not the church? And so they had to come, they had to come out of order so that you would not synchronize that with scripture and mistake the fivefold ministry that is supposed to perfect her as her. Say it again. Bishop says, say it again. We had to make sure that we do not think that those that are called to perfect her is.
is her. She's not her. She is for, they are for the perfecting. And the producing and the promoting and the proving of her. Who is her? The church. Because then the church has a call. So now we are moving into the final call. The final call. Recognizing that we are called. And so maybe you were not called in the first call. Those that organize the denominations and the demonstrations of his spirit. Maybe you weren't the healing evangelist. Maybe you weren't the ones that, that had, uh, John G. Lake used to have a light over his head when he preached. And when he walked, he would literally preach and there would be a pillar of fire standing next to him that you could actually see with your eyes. There was one prophet, uh, prophetess or pastor here in the Chicagoland area, she would preach and literally she would come off the stage and levitate because she was standing in midair as she would preach and lay hands and prophesy and heal people. Somebody was asking me the other day about elder and evangelist Lucy who in the Chicagoland area uh, built a ministry, all nations built a ministry through the ministry of miracles and caused nearly over, well, the numbers I don't think are truly portrayed correctly, but, but there are over 20,000 um, um, noted miracles from her ministry. Her church expanded over 5,000 people, and they literally would have church sometimes day in and day out here in Chicago. There were multiple ministries that were released. So I absolutely understand the anointing and the call in this region. We have history here. We have, uh, there is a grace here. There is a wisdom here. And we've got to understand how we are to align that and to give it back in the body without becoming eleva without elevating ourselves without thinking we're the pinnacle of the moment because what's going to happen is things are going to be destroyed in this final call the final call comes before the kingdom say it again the final call comes before the kingdom. Say it with me. The final call comes before the kingdom. Jesus said in Matthew when they asked him, when is the end going to come? And he said, you're going to see all kinds of stuff, wars and rumors of wars. And he said, and still, that's not the end. He said, then there is going to be the season where then I release the kingdom. We are in the age of the kingdom. If this is 2023 and the revival started in 1903, we are in the day of the kingdom. Okay. So the Lord wanted me in this final call, this, this, this final prophetic word to the house of God, not just the body of Christ, but the house of God. Because in order to help the bride of Christ, the body of believers, the house of God or the government of God has to be established first. Look at Isaiah, ninth chapter. When the kingdom comes, when Jesus was pronounced in the earth, which was the new kingdom coming into the earth, what had to happen? He said, for, us to, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. This is what I consider the new fivefold. Those 
Those are the five things that are indicators that a new kingdom is on the horizon. Let me say that again. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. And so this was the prophetic word that the angels declared. Let me say it again. That the heavens declared before Jesus came into the earth through a virgin woman. This was the indicator that we are shifting kingdoms. Not only are we, we have the ability to shift kingdoms, but we have the ability now to establish a kingdom. Because of protocol, I'm going to tell you, it's going to take the next 20 years, count 20 years to your life, to establish now the kingdom. So if this is 2023, by 20 what? 43, we are going to finally get technologies that are necessary for kingdom conditions. And you are at the beginning. You are the forefathers. Woo! Shetan de Diosa. You are the trailblazers and the trendsetters Woo! of how people are going to engage and be impressed with the kingdom. This is the final call. Woo. Hi. That's going to bring this thing into alignment. Oh, God, be glorified. So there are some things that the Lord wanted me to just bring out. Four things in particular that cause us to miss the call. And I'm going to say them and then I'm going to get into them. Number one, procrastination. Number two, insubordination. Number three, discrimination. And number four, contamination. I read to you last week, y'all, I, I, I don't differ a lot. Because I know that when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, it, and sometimes he can speak to me for months. It's, it comes from one flow. I'm just not the kind of preacher that I could come up with like different sermons, like kind of all over the place. I'm not that person. So last week's scripture, when I talked to you about Daniel, Daniel was a governor. And the reason why I'm going to really use Daniel a lot is because I want you to understand in the government of God, there is, an, there is a position there is an introduction to when you are a kingdom ambassador and you have to bring in the kingdom. The Bible declares, thy kingdom come. Woo! Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is, this is what his disciples was given, right? This is what they were told, his disciples or his founders, his apostles, his builders, his reconstructioners. But before we can reconstruct or construct some things, we may have to deconstruct some things. So the Lord was just showing me that, as I told you before, that in those 20 years of, of each of those offices being established, there was some foolery, some trickery, some discrimination, some procrastination, some insubordination, and some contamination that went on in each of those houses or offices being restored since the early 1900s. So the Lord said to share with the people in the final call that those are the things that we are going to have to undo and get ready for as we bring in now the kingdom because that's our job. How do we bring those in? Well, first of all, understanding the establishment of wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. This is what the angels declared from the heavens. He said, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. So this is head. 
So this is head stuff, this is government stuff. So again, Governor Daniel, he begins to do something. He begins to, I'm gonna say like this, he begins to cycle the day. The Bible declares that he prays three times a day, 24 hours in a day. You cycle a day three times a day, that's eight every eight hours. So every eight hours, he began to pray, to cycle the day. Why? Because the Bible I read to you all in Daniel, the second chapter, is that God establishes in the earth. He sets up kings and he takes down kings according to the what? Seasons. And what he says in Daniel, the seventh chapter, is that there is always an enemy that will try to destroy the seasons. The Bible declares that Satan, remember last week, comes in to shift your season. That's it. Get your mic. And wear out the saints. How does he do that? He does that when we don't understand our season as a cycle. And I heard somebody on TikTok say the other day that those cycles become chains. And they keep you bound. And this is how the enemy comes in, the Bible declares, to change your season. So as a governor or a steward for the kingdom, it is our job through prayer to keep a consistent season. So that the kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven. Because what is consistent in heaven? There is no time. Glory is consistent in heaven. So what do they not allow the enemy to have in heaven? Time. How? Because of the glory of prayer. Because of the glory of worship. Because of the glory of the connection to the Father. So there isn't a broken cycle of my connection to the Father. This is why Adam and Eve walked with the voice of the Lord, the cool of the day. When they were moved out of Eden, which was the council, if you study it, you reckon, you'll know that Eden is also, um, I won't go into too much theology for you, but Eden is sometimes proposed to be Mount Zion, which is also promo- uh, uh, proposed to be the, the mountain of God, which is proposed to be the place of government, which is, propo- which is proposed, obviously, to be the place where heaven touches earth, which is where the council of God lives, which is why Satan was not kicked out. The serpent was not kicked out. The certain lived there because the certain was, the certain was an Elohim. So because he was an Elohim, he was not kicked out of the government. He's a part of the government. Oh. So if he is part of the government of God, but we were the ones kicked out. Of a system. So that we can recreate the system in another dimension. So that he kicks us out and he puts an angel there that has a sword, a fire that goes around and around and around and never stops. It's a cycle. Because if you look in scripture and you see the dimensions of heaven, it's cubed. But if you look at the dimensions of glory, circular. Okay, I'm not going to go into all of the quantum physics today. Y'all know I love it. It's it's one of my favorite one of my favorite studies is quantum physics. I'm just going to I'm just going to get into these definitions. We're going to be here for quite some time. We're ending we're ending the call. 
but we're going to go into the calls. So you're going to get, this is, this is, this is the final call, but it's the beginning of the beginning. I'm, I'm using the ending as the beginning. Is that all right? That's it. So we are in a position to bring back the kingdom. How do we do this? How do we bring back the kingdom? Well, there are a couple of scriptures that when we talk about creation, we see these things. I'm, I'm going to kind of paint this picture, and I'll go in the depth of this in a, a little later. But when we read last week Daniel, the seventh chapter, we see the prophetic dream that Daniel had. And Daniel had the prophetic dream of these four beasts. And these four beasts had come out of the waters. What else came out of the waters as it pertains to creation? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the And God said, let there be light. Now, hold on. We're talking about the depth of the waters. Why didn't you say, let there be a separation so we can have water and earth? But he said, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, let there be light. And there was light. And the morning and the evening was the. Hmm. So he made a division in the season. As he created with his voice earth. Or dimension, he opened it up with light. He moved the waters, he answered the waters with light. Look at this. So then in Daniel, the seventh chapter, we see these four beasts that are coming up out of the waters. These four beasts are indicators as Daniel begins to give the, uh, the, the interpretation of the dream. He says then that these four beasts are four kingdoms that come, that are coming against the country. Nebuchadnezzar, of course, was the king at that time, but he talks about four kingdoms. And then he goes on and he describes the four kingdoms, right? Now, in Revelations, the seventh chapter, we move it from Daniel, the seventh chapter, to Revelations, the seventh chapter. In Revelations, the seventh chapter, we see these four beasts again. But this time we see angels with the four beasts as four winds. And they are holding back. In this moment, in Revelation and in Daniel, too, the same thing happens. There is a word that goes across Daniel governmentally. He begins to describe, y'all can look it up. He begins to describe how each government will rise and fall. When we look at the apocalypse, when we look at in Revelations, when we look at the things that are going to happen at the, the where the dispensation of the kingdom comes, we also see the rise and the fall of kingdoms. We then also see a seal. There is a seal that comes in the book of Revelation. 
Daniel, as a government official, every time a decree or a declaration would come across the desk, would have to put on that paper. There has to be a stamp. I know that a lot of, uh, you know, worship services um, have come out called harp and, po harp and bowls. Um, and what is supposed to happen, according to scripture, what happens is that there is a prophetic sound that is released that is supposed to be, as Daniel, the, the government or the correspondence, if you will, of heaven that actually predicates the things that are happening in the earth, that actually gives diplomacy in a particular region. So when you release a sound prophetically or release a wind prophetically, you're releasing a seal. This is why the seals have to be broken. Because the sound has to be broken in order for government to take place or diplomacy to take place, which then allows for spiritual warfare. <laughs> so, we haven't actually entered into spiritual warfare yet. So, come on, you listen. We are, we loud in here un, unless we can't be. <laughs> Sometimes stuff got to sink in because we have been warring with our flesh, oh, yeah. or we have been warring with the faulty, faulty foundations of the things that have come that are supposed to perfect us. The house. We have not truly entered into the warfare that actually releases or prepares the kingdom. So the Lord wanted me to tell you that the prophets that are on the rise that are coming now are not for prophets for your flesh. But they're prophets for the releasing and the establishing of the kingdom. So what you're going to see right around now is conflict. Because if you go back and you study, as we have studied, my mother was my teacher. My God, if y'all ever want to know the history of... <laughs> I feel like I sat with John G. Lake because of uh, all of the things that she shared with her. Listen, I'm telling you. I feel like I, was in, I went to Azusa, but I feel like I went to the Azusa of the 1903. With when William Seymour sat on a stool with a wooden box over his head for hours on hours. And he would not move. There was a wooden piano that would play because he laid hands on a woman that called him and told her play. She never played a day in her life because he needed worship music as he would sit in the presence of God with this box over his head. She immediately began to play in the spirit for hours upon hours upon hours. I'm telling you, I felt like I was there. But I also felt like I was there when William Parham wouldn't allow William Seymour to come into the classroom because he was black and everybody in the classroom was white. And he would have to sit outside the classroom and hear everything. And then when he was told by William Parham, I need you to go to California and do a revival mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. You know, make your own way. Do your own thing. I'm just telling you to go. And he had to be released by somebody that didn't respect him. 
He was released to preach by somebody that didn't know him. He had to be released by somebody that did not acknowledge him. But he had to go. And it didn't stop him. The racism he experienced did not stop the move of God. Sometimes we got to know that this, this, these personal inclinations that we go through because people are just people in are just personal. And we can't take it personal. Oh, I can't even get to this message. All right, we're just going to have to do a part two on this. I feel it in my Holy Ghost. I do. I feel it in my... Because I got 10 minutes, and I'm like, how, God, in 10 minutes? We're going to pour this gallon into a pint. I'm going to take my time, and I'm not going to get all of it. We got next week. We got Wednesday. So I'll finish, I'll finish and I'll set this. So we are in the place where the Lord told me, he said, and this is why I think Thursday, we'll, we'll probably get some more in on Thursday. He said, I need you to release the winds. He said, I need you to release. He said, Illinois is an apostolic state. And so because it is an apostolic state, I need you to release the reconstruction that I'm going to do so that I can do some construction. And so there has to be some deconstruction in those places that I told you. Procrastination and subordination, discrimination and contamination are the four that the Lord told me are, are um, causing us not to be able to move and do what we're supposed to do. He said, anoint these voices, those that are, are here, I'm anointing them. And he said, and then teach them. So we have an anointing service on Thursday. And then he said, and then teach them. And there, there is a teaching that I'm, I'm telling you. I have taught prophetic classes before. I've never taught. I've never, ever gotten the revelation of this before because it wasn't time. It wasn't 2023. We weren't introducing the trailblazers that are going to prophesy for the sake of the kingdom. It was important. Every prophet, every apostle, every pastor and whatnot that did what they did for the dispensation they were in, it was important for that because they had to reestablish. But you are about to see such a change and a shift in the church. It is not going to look the same. 2020 was not just a reset because you have to understand that three years before the revival they hit here, in 1900 over in Europe, there was a revival that happened in a barnyard where this man would come and he would pray three years. He prayed every day, every day. What was so interesting was the revival didn't last in the UK. It came over here. But the revival that started in the UK, there was a teacher that went to where William Parham was, poured an impartation that William didn't get, but Seymour got and went to California. God is about to use people that were ostracized, people that had to sit outside the classroom to learn. God is about to use people that were not qualified because you couldn't get qualified because they didn't have the wisdom to qualify you. They didn't have the structure because what we're getting structured for to release the kingdom, you would have been eating and, and learning old structures and manners. To introduce what he's about to introduce in the kingdom. Oh, Bishop, turn your mic on. <laughs> you can't put new wine, she says, into old wine skins. I want to pray. I just, I feel I got to, I just got to, 
Y'all, 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 right? Just, I just, I'm going, I'm going to close. I, I'm a, you need the rest of it. I need the rest of it too. I almost feel like, let me just pass out my notes and then when we come back, we can just talk about it. I feel like it, right? That ain't it, but I feel like it. Anyway, thank you. Somebody just say thank you, Jesus. But I felt like I needed to say this to, to you. You're not crazy. For those of you that have been feeling the shifting and the moving, like, I, I, I know I'm called to this office or that office or this office or that, but I, I, but I feel like what has been done is what I'm actually called to do. I may be called there, but I'm not called to do that. I'm called to do something else. It's different. I know it's different. I sense it's different. But I, but I don't have a, I don't have a, 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 a format. I don't, the language is not there. I'm here to tell you that God anointed me before time to teach you and to show you what he is saying to the dispensation of the kingdom. I guarantee you it did not die with Miles Monroe. I'm not going to go into my personal testimonies, but when I began to preach in 2009, I felt so out of place. And I felt like, why am I preaching this to these kids? Why am I saying this to these college students that don't get it? I was teaching kingdom. <laughs> Yesterday, one of the fathers of the kingdom movement in the Midwest region is Dr. Bill Winston, he preaches kingdom, he operates in kingdom, and he had a, um, what was it called, a, it was a 10 city summit, and in that 10 city summit, he's looking for people, he's looking for churches that have the understanding of kingdom mission and mandate and they can show it in who they are as a person and in what they do in business. And he put out this 10 city call. I know he was in, I know he was in Oklahoma. I know he's in, I know he's in Chicago. I know he did um, Detroit, um, I think Texas. And he was in St. Louis and Atlanta and L.A. And he's been looking. He's been looking for somebody that understands how to move kingdom apostles, kingdom prophets, kingdom pastors, kingdom evangelists, and kingdom, and kingdom missions and kingdom's teachings forward. And on yesterday, he found somebody. So what they did was decided that he would give uh, Dr. Bill Winston with this ministry on his 10 city tour. He would give the winner um, the $10,000 and they had to give their pitch. They had to be interviewed. They had to go through all of this, you know, detailed um, 
everything. And yesterday in L.A., they found somebody. Yesterday in L.A., they found somebody. The first place winner was our own executive pastor in L.A., Pastor Robert Alexander Cager! Because he understands the kingdom mandate. So he got to check y'all for 10 thousand dollars because he came from this teaching and this elevation and this revelation that I taught him when he was 14 years old I began to tell him I prophesied to everybody at Saint Xavier I didn't know I was coming to prophesy I didn't know it was gonna be a church service I thought I was speaking to the black student union that's what I was told, Amanda. It was a setup. I came in without a Bible. I said, now y'all know, I don't, I'm a teacher. I don't do stuff without notes. But I called them. I said, what major do you have? They said, child development. I said, stand up. This is the, the mountain of family. And I began to prophesy into the mountain of family. And then I said, what are you in? And they were in finances. And it says, stand up, you're in the mountain of economics. Everybody in the mountain of economics. And I begin to prophesy and pour. I didn't just do it one time. But after I prophesied to all of the mountains of influence, all of the spheres of influence to these, to these uh, students, I said, you don't, you don't have to stand behind the pulpit. God is going to give you a platform to show kingdom mandate, kingdom structure, kingdom integrities, kingdom authorities. That's where you're going to move. God is going to show you this. He's raising Daniels and Josephs in this hour. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because the government of God is upon his shoulders. And he wants to release his kingdom. He needs a government. So as he released the government through me to these babies... 2023, this man of faith, Dr. Bill Winston, who I've had the opportunity to be in relationship with, partnership, company with multiple, multiple times, didn't know, he doesn't know that I'm cutting edge though. He recognized by the mandate and the auspice of this house that we operate. And so he seeded this church $20,000. City tour. This is all we are. This is all we got. But it doesn't matter what you think you see with your natural eyes. If you hear the word of the Lord, listen, the deep recognizes deep. Kingdom recognizes kingdom. And people that want to go somewhere understand people that's been somewhere. You've been in the presence. I'm going with you. So when he heard what God had given him in another ministry, he said, this is what we're doing. This is who we are partnering with. I don't care the size. I'm looking for the integrity. I'm looking for the mandate. I'm looking for the mission. I'm looking for those that understand the move of God. And you're not going to be caught up in the things that cause our flesh to fight. But you're going to understand that Paul said, I'm fighting the good fight of faith. There's another level of kingdom stuff that we need to have faith for outside of what you're going through in your flesh. We 
are the ministry that's going to do it. I don't have time for petty revelations of what we're supposed to do. Because like Daniel, I've seen the four beasts. I have seen the four beasts. Procrastination. That tried to take down my nation. I have seen the beast called insubordination. That tried to overtake my nation. Me personally. I have seen the beast. I have wrestled with the beast. I, the beast took me up and took me down. I wrestled with the beast. So you don't have to. Because I saw in scripture, he said, now release a sound and release a seal. What has to happen for judgment to take, for, for, I'm sorry, for kingdom to take place is judgment has to take place. And so what has to happen is he has to release before kingdom comes. He has to release prophets that judge. Before the king comes. Look how the Bible chronolog chronologicals. What did he do? He released judges that judged for 40 years in rotation before he released a Saul and before he released a David. The Lord wants to release his voice in the form of his prophets that are not afraid to judge in this season not by what you see and not by what you feel but what he says is the seal of heaven the seal from the throne the bar of messiah in revelation he said who is worthy to release the seal who is worthy to break the seal they cried out after all that had happened in scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation they were still crying because the kingdom had not been released The kingdom is about to be released. Oh God. This is why the oil for the anointing had to come. Because the oil of the anointing is the seal. The oil of God's anointing is what gives you the right and the access to release his will. <sighs> I'm trying to come down because I see about seven more pages of my notes. In this house, it's a continued word. God is gonna use this house as a judge. God is going to use this house to bring in his voice, to judge his word. What is a judgment? A judgment is a release. The Lord is going to release the kingdom through this ministry. Lately, when I've been in prayer, you all know, when I can't contain myself, I've been saying this phrase, the kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming, I almost can't stop myself. The Lord said, He says, when I open the windows of heaven, this is where the kingdom is released. We said it this morning in prayer that the heavens have been constricted and there has been no travail. When you look in the book of Revelation, what they're talking about often 
is the travail. The travail of bride. The Lord said, you prayed prayers to rend the heavens. As you released the prayer warriors, now you're going to release the prophets. Because when the heavens are rend, the prophets have to push in travail. For the kingdom to be released. Birthing doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. Matter of fact, it don't sound good. But there is a sound that God is going to release from the heavens through his prayer warriors and his prophets. That is going to bring and manifest the kingdom of heaven on earth. God is about to release his kingdom prophets. His kingdom apostles. His kingdom pastors. His kingdom intercessors. And they're going to be full of wisdom. And not witchcraft. God is about to purify. The agenda. Hey, God. I got to say this last thing. Because I'm going to pray this like one minute. He told me, he said, I'm going to replace those four. Procrastination, insubordination, discrimination, and contamination with redetermination. Imagination. Revelation and coordination. God is about to take us to a place of rebuilding, restructuring, re-anointing. And so I prophesy to you, if I'm prophesying to you, just stand to your feet and lift your hands. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, reassume your position. You let it go and you left because you were just like me. You were disenchanted with the direction. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to re-engage with the assignment and the anointing of the Lord because I have opened up and rid the heavens with the prophetic prayer. I am now going to push travail, open up and spin the winds that will cause the anointing to destroy what four beasts thought they were going to resurrect in your life. Those nations that they thought were going to resurrect in your life. That nation of procrastination. That nation of insubordination. That nation of contamination. And that nation, I hear God saying, of frustration. He's going to exchange the nations. And you are going to move according to the Spirit to release the kingdom of God. For he says, the wealth of who I am. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And Prince of Peace is going to be a signet of your ministry. He said, I'm going to put in your head. Because the government is on the head of his shoulders. I'm going to put your head strategies systems according to the season and the cycle of God that is going to transform and reform and cause revival in the earth for he says my kingdom shall come and my will will be done through you somebody say through me on earth as it is in heaven now give God a shout of praise in this house. Thus saith the Lord. This is the final call. 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 This is the final
Hello. We never have church as usual. I just want to say we are dismissing in Jesus' name. You got the word.